here with John today. So we, um, this is the second year of renovation, um, training and pruning on this tree. It's probably 20 years old and um, what production it had is way up in the air. It's only for the birds. So what we did last year is we um, cut out all of the lower branches that I thought wouldn't make good permanent branches and um, tied this with my version of a trucker's knot for horticulture that doesn't girdle. And this is a Celeste fig. Um, so it does seem to bear most on the twigs. So we're going to have a low network of branches, but with space to walk in between to harvest and also to, to spray it, which is not much fig spraying, but there's a little bit. And, um, and it, everything's accessible. And we can also put a bird net over it easily. So really this is going to be the, the permanent branch and the permanent height of the tree. So what we're doing is we're going to cut out some of the major branches, but you can only do maybe 25-30% of the canopy each season. We did about 25% last year. I'm going to take out one of the big ones. And that's probably it, but we'll see what it looks like in a few minutes. All right, so John was saying if you do more than 25%, you can start killing the root system because it needs enough leaves and to nourish the root system. You want to keep the root system because you want this large established root system because you want a large established fig tree, but you want it where it's accessible and manageable. So if we only take out a third of it, the rest of the tree can support that root system and then we'll only allow it to grow from these branches to where we want it to grow. And we do that by cutting off any excess growth from where the wound is or from other parts of the tree. So we kind of force it to grow where we want it to grow. Once the renovation pruning is done, I would anticipate only pruning in the winter. Okay. Or, the, or right before bud break now. In okay. The spring. You can see the buds are starting to grow. So I'm going to cut down here. Okay. I'm going to cut. There's a branch here that I may or may not keep, so I'm going to cut above it. Okay. But I don't want to mess it up, so I'm going to do a little relief cut. I'll come over here. I tried to let it down gently. So see how it's splitting here? Yeah. So that's why you don't make your first cut where you want it. You make it up above. Can we get a shot of that? The way I did it, I cut a little bit here and cut a little bit there and left the hinge to kind of split so it comes down gently. Mm -hmm. And that's real nice for controlling the fall of the tree. But if you were to cut right here, you'd be splitting into part of the trunk you want and causing diseases. So I probably should have gone a little bit higher with that. And that can kick back, so you got to be careful. And now I'm going to make my final cut. So we'll spray this with copper, this liquid copper fungicide, and the copper ions will bond to the lignin in the wood and it'll be antimicrobial. And see, that was not done with these previous pruning cuts. So you see you got rot, oh, okay. rotten spots down in the heart of the That's tree. That's why it never really healed but completely. this one that I did, we did spray with copper. And it's a little bit discolored, but none of that wood is rotten. It's all hard, so that's gonna grow over. Nice, so, so it won't grow over dead wood. Well, really? it will, but there'll be a rotten hole. It's That's like why the hole always stays there. It's like a cavity in your tooth. Oh. It's got some ants in it, so we'll, maybe we'll try to douse it with some fungicide. What's the little hole for? That's just a hole that's in the tree. Oh, wow. I mean, so maybe you can't always be perfect, but this is the best you can do. Okay. And since there's ants in there, I'm going to focus some fungicide and some insecticide in there. Okay. You know, basically like spinosad and liquid copper. Natural. Uh, Natural. Relatively non-toxic to me and you. Okay. So you can see we cut about a third of the canopy out. 
and that'll let light get down to the what will be the new fruiting twigs so they'll be able to photosynthesize behind carbohydrates and make fruit that's one of the I mean that's the main reason why these lower branches aren't producing is because they're shaded and you can see this one we tied down because it wanted to go too high and then this one we actually propped up see the pole is supporting it so some we raise some we pull down just to get them at the right height and the the principle is pretty much the same um, for the figs as far as the management and access goes but some figs only produce on the old growth so you need to keep the twigs from last year and so this is good keep the twigs but the, this fig over here which is a magnolia or brunswick really only produces on new growth so you kind of cut off all the twigs and it's very similar in training to the brown turkey so this one gr um, grows on the old growth from last year yeah i don't see too many figs on the new growth on this variety okay that's good to know because you could get mixed up if you're not labeling it right see this spider web looking thing mm -hmm. that's a fungus that's attacking it, it it grows yeah you got to spray copper to control that let me see it shimmy see this little spider web here yeah and this is like a little nodule of the fungus. I don't know what you call it, the body of it. Are you and talking about this, is this the same stuff that it, right um, comes from the, that's the, the ground? I know it grows in the trees, that's the mycelium here. And I guess this is, I don't know what that is. Wow. I don't know what you call that. But I'm it's glad a, you pointed that out. It's a piece of the fungus anyway. Around here it's a real common problem on, it looks like fire blight on apple and pear trees and really easy to control with copper, but it will defoliate the trees. Um, so this one's going to need a good a good copper spray. Can you spray a copper out. spray during the during the day, or and you have to do it in the afternoon? I haven't had any problem with it when it's dormant because it's not going to affect the bark. That's true. So we want to <clears throat> do it while it's dormant. We want to protect the wood and okay. protect the foliage from this fungus. That's a good idea. And then next year you'll take out another yeah. three percent, or how much did you take out like? I, I think that's about a third of the third canopy of the canopy we took out, and I'm. And the next year you'll take out this one, or I'm thinking next year I'm going to take out that next biggest one. Good idea. There. <clears throat> and then the following year, I'm going to cut here, here, or maybe here, depending on what it looks like, and um, here. And maybe here. Okay. But I, I really gotta gauge it. Each year when you do your pruning, you gotta gauge it. Like, ideally, I'm not gonna let any of these vertical branches, these vertical, sh these high shoots, grow a lot. But it's kind of hard to reach, you know. Mm -hmm. So you really kind of gauge it. Because the goal in the next few years is to have all these branches going out where you can reach it. Yeah, and I can walk in. And so, so this looks a little tight <clears throat> right here. Mm -hmm. And this one's got a lot of damage. I might take this one out eventually. But I figure within another three or four years this tree will be part of it. Cool. Awesome. You can edit that part out. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to the next fig, and he'll talk more about it. Yeah, this is the Magnolia Brunswick. So this one, um, I'm aiming to, to prune just like that brown turkey we were, we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So it really, you know, shouldn't have these side branches. Um, and I'm not always around to take care of them perfectly, but... The, these vertical branches here really did grow and, and produce uh, figs right until it froze. Because these side ones are not going to make figs, they're just going to make... So this is going to be cut. I really need a lopper. But, so this is the start of a spur. And, you know, the, I guess the, this one is a spur. But most of these, all these need to go. Could you do this also on a lot Marcelli's? I don't know the fruiting habit of that variety, okay. but if you watch it, you can just see. Looks like it grows on new growth. It sometimes. grows on new growth. Yeah. But I have seen it. Well, I could be wrong. It might grow on old growth. Yeah. So I got to figure that out. 
I actually didn't even think that one produced on old growth, but then I started watching it, and now I think it does. It does. I'm going to watch it again. Okay. Because for the longest time, I thought we didn't have any figs here that really produced on the old growth, but maybe we do. You got to watch them, see what they actually are doing. I need a waffle. Bigger one. So we've been layering. Um, We've been we did a few already. You can see we already cut that one. There was a few over there on on the the Celeste too, but uh, took a pot, split it, and just took some dirt and filled it. And I probably made a couple of slash marks in the bark. Mm -hmm. And then after about a year, I started sawing through the trunk, and I, I sawed through it last year. And I'm betting, see that it's That's really nice. got some roots in the pot. It does. So now it's time to fully sever it. And you have, it took a couple years to grow the root system, but you have this giant air layer. That you can just plant right in the ground. It was kind of like an air layer. It's like a giant tree ready to go. Yeah. Um, What's the plan for this one? Uh, he wants to plant it at his children's house. Okay. Houses. Children's houses. And they must love the figs too. Yeah. Sure. Who doesn't love figs? I like both of these. These are both traditional uh, Celeste and Magnolia, you know, deep south varieties. They also call this one Brunswick? Yeah, Brunswick or Magnolia. And I'm 99% sure that that's what this is. It didn't come with a name. It was a pass-along plant. Mm -hmm. But that seems to be what it is. When it fruits, maybe some big experts will tell us. Till then, we'll go, go along with it. Is the start of a spur. So this should have been pruned off, you know, nip it in the bud, as they say. Um, during the growing season ideally but all of these twigs need to come off we're going for the the crop on a new growth so I want to start a spur coming out here so I don't want to cut it off flush I want to cut out a little stub mm -hmm. and the idea is a bud is going to come from under here and that's going to grow out and come out like this one and then we'll prune off the side branches as it grows to focus all the energy into vertical growth and if you got a vigorous growing vertical shoot like that, each leaf will have a fig, a new fig. So they'll be mature here, new leaves, new figs, all the way up until it freezes. That's how they're not exactly ever bearing, but I guess in a tropical environment, mm -hmm. I've done this in my greenhouse. Um, yeah, they make a fig every day of the year. Hmm. But, and then once it gets too tall to reach, you know, you cut some of them back and then it starts to cycle over again. So in a tropical environment, you would always be pruning some back but you'd also always be harvesting right so is, is this one from last year yeah so you have so, to go ahead and cut that one back so, so was this similar to the japanese yeah yeah this is the forever bearing fig ever bearing so i'm gonna go ahead and cut here and we're going to go for a bud that comes out here and then each year it will keep coming out and if you look at those uh, pictures and videos online about japanese fig pruning You'll see that that's what they've done each year. There's a new fruiting vertical. The next year, a new fruiting vertical. The next year, a new fruiting vertical branch. And so everything else needs to come off. We're not going to have two on opposite sides. So this, this really needs to grow. You're supposed to have them on alternating sides. You know, so you one have here. We one. need one over here somewhere. So, so they shouldn't ever be on the same side close together. No, because you, you want the spur to grow out this way over time, and then you want the spur to grow out this way over time. Anyway, it's pretty self-explanatory if you look at the pictures and the videos, I think. maybe Just practice makes perfect. Um, Certainly one to look for. I'm assuming we're going to come up with, we got this spur, which I don't love. I want... A, maybe a branch to come out here and it'll be kind of lower down but hopefully a bud will come out down here mm -hmm. and that could be a spur so we need another another spur maybe maybe here let's try this one and this one see if we can get a spur here you don't want anything there you don't want this I'll get rid of it. and then maybe
Maybe somewhere out here we need a spur. Um, so maybe we'll get some bud to grow over here. Or it can even come out, I don't care. Because this is about as wide as they want the tree to be. Mm -hmm. A good example. So the next spur needs to be on this side, and unfortunately we got this great one that decided to establish on the wrong side. So we're going to cut that off. You got to cut it flush. Yeah. And hopefully this branch can kind of, we can get the, the roots that are attached to this branch to kind of transition to this side. Okay. Because we're only going to let it grow over on this side. Okay. Because that's what the Japanese said to do. And it makes sense. Yeah, it does. And it looks nice. Yeah. Great man. Yeah, it is. So this one's bigger, you know. Oh, but see, we have two on the same side. I don't like yeah. that. So actually, I think, I think we'll go with this one. And then cut that one. Get rid of this one. Get rid of this one and go with this one. So this I'll leave a stub. It's awfully close. I think this is too close. And see, this is one we need to prop up. You know? Mm -hmm. We need to tie it down here and prop it up there. So we'll do that. Going on. Perfect spur, otherwise, it's just yeah, in it the is. wrong place. I don't love, I think I'm going to hold off on this until it, uh, it heals mm -hmm. up a bit. <clears throat> don't love this one. These silly trees, they have a mind of their own. They don't know any better. There's our next spur. I guess here will be, let's go with this one. Here and here, that's 18 inches is fine. So we want a spur there. go with that. I think we're not going to go any farther, so we'll get rid of that. Looks like I tried to start a spur last year here. It did. It didn't really take off though. You can see the growth difference, how thick it is. This whole limb's dead right here. Oh yeah. Okay. What causes this to like completely die? Looks like it got sunburn or frost damage, honestly. Um, don't know, because it could have been a fungus, but it sure looks like. Look, it went all the way down. That's what I'm saying, it's only on one side. It could have been sunburn. Oops. Hard to say, but we're gonna go ahead and cut that off. Oh look, look inside there. That's okay to be. It's black. We might not like this shoot, but we'll keep it for now and okay. make a decision later. See if you need to pull it down. This one, when they go when they go down below horizontal, they lose vigor. They start growing. So you, it's really got to slope slightly up. So kind of we need to prop right here. Okay. Um, it can go horizontal or slightly above vertical, but it can't. 
um, go down because it loses vigor. Mm -hmm. I like this renewal pruning with apples, but I like trellising even better. Mm -hmm. So you could so some of the apples you can you could actually prune this way with them. Well, with renewal pruning, when you get it, you know, you get the weight of the fruit on a fruiting branch, weighs it down, and it kind of hangs down. It'll make some fruit for a little while, but then a new branch comes up. So that's why you got to pull it back and then up. You cut this one off, and the way this one finally makes some spurs, and then it comes down. So you're renewing the fruiting branch. It grows up, it makes weight, it comes down, and you cut it off. You know, but you're always cutting off a lot of wood. I think if you let the tree get big enough and you trellis it and make sure your branch angles are perfect, you don't have to keep growing wood all the time. You can just grow apples. How big does the dwarf ones get? The Some dwarf apples? Quite tiny. Like maybe 10 foot? Oh, yeah, 12. So, every, so something that might stay really small in England or Oregon um, often gets, you know, 10 or 20 feet tall here. Environment. But, you know, like the dwarf olives mm -hmm. grow six feet a year here, mm. that kind of thing. So I guess I don't really know, but I, I know that the the best dwarf, dwarf apples um, that are actually disease tolerant mm -hmm. seem to get to 12 or 14 feet here. If you do a, a like a tall spindle training mm -hmm. where you're letting them grow straight up. And maybe, maybe, maybe more than that. But you like to grow them outwards, correct? Yeah. You like to pull well, the limbs down? I've, you know, I've never tried tall spindle here because I'm always pruning and training for a pedestrian orchard where you can do all of your work and reach everything from the ground level. Mm -hmm. But if you have the infrastructure, I think um, a tall trellising or tall spindle would work better because it's getting the trees up in the sunshine mm -hmm. off the ground and getting them up where it's going to be breezier. It might help with... Uh, you know, drying them out, help with mold and mildew. So I, I just don't have all that infrastructure to try it. Maybe we will work on that. So we need to, we need to kind of prop these branches up a little bit. And I'm hoping that I can kind of do do like a suspension bridge. So what do you call this nut? Um, my horticultural version of a trucker's knot ish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so um, just make a double it over, go around. Do it slow. Okay. Let us see it. Double it over and then go around, make a circle. Okay. And then pass it through. So it's just what they call an overhand knot or Maybe a half hitch, I'm not sure. Okay, so we okay. just, you know, I'll do a big version so you can see it. Okay. So, just double it over, go around, you know, go around, pass it through. And that makes us a, a little loop, and that loop's not gonna come undone. It's basically the same kind of knot you tie your shoe with, but only half of it. Anyway, I like to make it smaller to be conservative with the rope. Mm -hmm. and this is a fancy polyester sheath Kevlar. This rope um, lasts for years because of the po black polyester. Mm -hmm. The Kevlar can't take the sun, but it doesn't stretch. So once you put it under tension, it doesn't stretch or sag or anything. So this is it's well worth it. Um, now what I'm going to do is pass this in through here make a little bit of a noose see that gets tighter so it's like like a like a lasso cool okay and, and I'm gonna go through here and I don't want to girdle anything so I'm gonna do this so you're gonna raise it up yeah I'll hold it let it go. Let me see what it looks like. Almost. Oh. Let's try that. 
Yeah. Okay. So. Wrap that around just to hold it. I'm going to hold my tension there. Make a little bit of a slip knot. Grab it in the middle. Pass it around and through. And that'll hold the adjustment. But if I want to redo it, Let's pull it's it. a slip knot. So anyway, I'll do grab it around and through. And then again. Nice. It's like doing macrame. Let me get another string. Uh, maybe pause the video, I'll get this string out. Okay, so we're gonna make a big loop this time. Around and through. Just put this over. Good so idea. that's gonna pull this way. And you can just move it over if it starts to girdle. Do I need to hold on to this side? No, it's okay. Okay. So you can move it and later. Now I'm gonna say I'm gonna pull here and pull here. So I need to put a loop here, around the two fingers, and through the hole. Go around here. We got to untie an old loop. Oh, and he's been using this rope for over two years or so. Yeah, this would actually... So where do you get this rope at? This is rope about two years old. I bought this from uh, Quality nylonrope.com it is good quality though polyester look, it still looks almost brand new you can see some of the lichen on it yeah that's growing well, that might be bird poop just touched it no that's lichen that is lichen so that's good and now we're going through here so this is the part that's like a trucker's knot because i can tight pull that and i tighten it so it's like functions as a ratchet strap does Nice. I don't think that's pulling it at the right angle. So let's try over here. I wanted to pull more of the branch, not just the tip of it. There we go. Let's see if this will prop it up. Branch wrestling. Good workout. Alright, so this part is interesting. I like that adjustment. Mm -hmm. So I'll pinch, you know, that way so I don't lose my adjustment. Grab it in the middle. Go around and through and tighten that. And see, I haven't lost my adjustment. And that's a slip knot. Make it untie it. So I can, it's easy to reuse it later. Or to readjust it. Mm -hmm. Hi, John. Look what John's done. Yeah, so we um, we have the branches clocked around, so you can see how I've walked into the middle of the tree. And you can imagine that from these horizontal branches, there'll be those vertical fruit-bearing branches. So you can walk in and pick every one of them, get right to the middle of the tree. And here's year two of spur pr um, pruning and training on this one. And these we decided um, to get some, make some replacement branches. There's an old one. This one's new. This one's new. And the concrete blocks are for supporting the pot where we're going to air layer some more of these. We're going to, you know, air layer another big fig here and another one here. Okay. A little one here. You and then behind see. you. Yep. Right behind you. Yep, that one there. So you can see here's the here's one we did before, you know, a couple years ago. Just gonna move over and do this one. 
And as people know, you, you put some stress marks around it, like kind of like you're cutting the cameo layer. Yeah, I would, you know, have the split the pot, put it there, fill kind of gurgle the it, dirt, and then I would probably take my knife and just just chop a little here and there. Oh, it creates. And when some... it heals, because it's in the dirt, it's not going to heal and make bark. It's going to make that callus tissue will immediately start making roots. And there's um, little vestigial roots at each node on figs. Like even though this one's a desert adapted species, it still has the genetic memory of being um, in a jungle and dropping aerial roots. Hmm. Kind of like the, uh, like the ficus? Yeah. Wow, that makes so much sense now. Yeah, they had they had these little roots. So, so I think that's one of the reasons why they were the first domesticated crop. It's because it's so easy to grow them from cuttings. Mm -hmm. You can just take the cuttings and put it in your bag and walk across the desert for a week and be already still growing. plant it. Wow. And and they, uh, I think I read somewhere in Israel that they found thousand, at least a thousand years, maybe fifteen hundred years before any um, evidence of domesticated wheat. They were growing common figs that have been selected to not to fruit even without pollination, like the kind we grow here because we don't have the fig wasps. Mm -hmm. So well over twelve thousand years ago, they were still they were they had figs that produced parthenocarpically automatically. They always made a fruit without mind blowing. And, that's and that's remarkable. I, I think they found a very close relative, if not the identical fig still growing in Iran. Really? So it's something that's been cultivated for millennia. Wow. I'd like to get my hands on that original. I would too. Apparently it's... Just to see the difference, how much it's changed over the thousands of years. Yeah, that DNA archaeology is amazing. It really is. So, um... That'll be the future one to make a, make a clone of it. There you go. Start to finish. All right, we'll catch you later.